In 1995, an elite pair of fuck-ups met while being tried for crimes they most definitely committed. The men were promptly released for being white. One lost weight and now poses as a family man in Dallas, Texas. The other got worthless degrees in English and philosophy. He lives alone in Los Angeles, California. Now, at great risk to their freedom, the duo has weekly conversations about past transgressions, current status reports, and wondering, are we dead yet? All right, episode seven of Are We Dead Yet? Uh, we talk about uh, Craig just went to the Wounded Warrior shooting contest. We talk some politics and give advice to terrorists and a whole lot of racist shit. Check out the video on YouTube. You can see Craig actually get offended. It's awesome. Hey. What are you doing? Hold on, Lenny. I'm ready. No, no. Do you need to finish something up? Huh? Do you need to finish something up? No, I was just outside playing with the dogs. Those were dogs? I thought they were your kids. No, of both. The same have seen, thing. Have you seen my Rottweiler? Uh-uh. Let me show I think you. it's in the backyard. You were just playing with it. Okay. Come here. Sit. Say hi. Say hello. hello. What the fuck was that little thing? Oh, that's Amber's little stupid dog. I hate that dog. Yeah. No, like, I hate that dog. No, if like, I, dogs I fucking that hate sit, that dog. When I see dogs that are sick, I go and I take their blood and I inject it into that dog. <laughs> I want that. I wish AIDS and cancer on that fucking dog. I hate that fucking dog. Oh, in fact, here, I'm in my office. There's a nice little piece of shit from that fucking dog. I don't know how it gets in here. See, that's right. the dog problem for me. See, I think she does that and lets him in here to shit so that I'll fucking kill him because she secretly hates him too. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Sound better? Totally better. Does? Oh, I mean, I knew it was going to sound better. It's the laugh part that we'll figure out. Well, just don't uh, say anything funny. Oh, okay. <laughs> Speaking of which, are we dead yet? Episode 7. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, what have you been up to, bro? Dude, it's been really, really fucking busy, actually. Did the, uh, which is the Wounded Warrior thing, where you go out and, uh... Wound Warriors? Feet. Yeah, Wounded Warriors. So you uh, go and wound them? Is that what it is? <laughs> go out and shoot fucking warriors? What's funny is, like, you know the whole Chris Kyle American Sniper thing, right? Where they pick well, up that... Well, I mean, I haven't seen the movie, but I know stuff about it. Well, basically, how he dies is they pick up this veteran that's that's fucked up and take him out shooting, and the guy shoots him. Oh. Okay? Every team out there, all 80 teams, has a veteran that's fucked up that you're out shooting with. So I'm like, the law of average is just says somebody's probably going to get shot today. <laughs> <laughs> but we've, uh, like, we had a Navy SEAL one year, and he couldn't hit shit with a shotgun. Now, with a rifle, he was like the baddest motherfucker on the planet. Yeah. But he couldn't shit with a shotgun, so... We go out there and do that, and what killed me, like you're shooting skeet, right? You know, and skeet are orange, clay uh -huh. pigeons. The guy in front of us was this little Asian guy on his team, and he was wearing an orange vest. We're in a fucking, like, Dallas gun club, okay? There's no hunters out there. You're shooting in little stations. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like there's people just roaming through the woods shooting. So I'm like, why are you wearing an orange vest? He goes, well, that's what you wear when you shoot. I'm like, the only thing we're shooting are orange discs. <laughs> that would be like being in the woods dressed like a fucking deer so you wouldn't get shot. <laughs> it was mine. So then he would take it off for a little while, and then he would put it back on. It's like whenever he saw me, he would take it off. <laughs> Grown Asian man. I made him that uncomfortable that he was taking clothes off when he was around me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was, it was good, man. I, Maybe it wasn't that you made him uncomfortable. You made him horny. Or maybe he just thought I was going to shoot him. <laughs> yeah, or that. Um, maybe he was like, do y'all know the Chris Kyle story? Um, <laughs> well, good. do you, like, do you, did you know anybody at the hunting thing? Or that the hunting? Oh, I mean, yeah, I, I knew a, a bunch of, you know, it's all businessmen. Like, I really started off there, like, as a ringer. 
You know, like you hunt, you shoot, come and do this. Oh, it's not military. It's like one. No, of no, no. It's all like a bit like business. It's, it's one of those things where the fake businessmen go out and hang out with some real badasses. Exactly right. Yeah. yeah like, like they sold uh, a pair of Chris Kyle signed boots and all this shit. And I was wondering, why was he signing boots if he didn't know he was going to die? Like, why would you just sign a pair of boots? And then I thought, I've got Christmas and shit figured out forever with all my nephews because I'm just going to go buy a football and be like, Roger Staubach. <laughs> and be like, here you go. Don't ever sell it. It meant a lot to me. <laughs> to nephew from uncle Roger Staubach. <laughs> so they can't eBay it or anything. And then they think that they have these. Like, Oh, this one's signed by uh, Joe Montana, Muhammad Ali, and Jesus. You know what I mean? Or something like that. And then they just have these forever. Will Chamberlain, he's dead. I know. You know how hard this was for me to get a hold of? (laughs) You got the Shroud of Turin. Right. (laughs) Well, because I was printing up, like, fake shares of Apple, like Apple stock. I mean, like, here you go. (laughs) Don't ever sell it. Hold on to it forever. It's only going to go up. (laughs) I'm the singer was there. Real little guy. Country I don't singer? know who's is. Okay, check this out. This is going to blow this up, but they were auctioning off stuff like crazy for, for charity, and all these wounded warriors are there with, like, no legs and all this stuff, and the money goes to them. Like, it legitimately goes to them. Yeah. Okay, like, they bought a guy a house with it one year and all this stuff, so it's not one of those bullshit, like, give us all this money and you get 5%. Like, it goes to them. So they're up there telling their stories and auctioning stuff off. Then this fucking millionaire gets up there, and he's like, um, I'm auctioning off the guitar for my camp, my summer camp. So all these guys are here with no legs, and he wants money for a summer camp in Georgia. And we're in fucking Texas. Check this out. So he does it, and he's auctioning off this guitar, and they start the bid at a thousand bucks. My dad's like, "Is this guy a guitar player?" And I'm like, "Hell no, he's not a guitar player. Don't even think about that shit." And he wasn't anyway. My brother was back there by the stage because me and him went a day early to, with the volunteers to set the stage up. He's back there. He goes, they just took that thing out of a fucking box. That's a brand new guitar. <laughs> he just opened up and went up there. He's like, thousand bucks. Like, a hundred dollar fucking guitar. So fuck that guy. <laughs> fuck that guy. But he's real, real little and all this stuff. Like, I don't know. I just, I don't know. He always looks on his videos. He looks like, you know, big guy and all this. He's just a real big guy. But uh, I haven't seen a music video in a million years. Dude, well, don't watch one of his whenever you start. Okay. Just, uh, <laughs> start with a Rihanna video. The, the um, last video I watched was the uh, uh, Fight for Your Right Revisited. That was a great one, though. Oh, that, oh my fucking God, that made my life, like, worth it. was like, that I saw it, and I was thing. like, yep, yeah. all right. <laughs> that justified my whole life, getting to watch that fucking video. And the fact that it had Susan Strandon in it still would. Um, awesome. Oh. Dude, the whole, like, oh, still would. Like, I'd fuck Barbara Bush if I had the opportunity. She's a fucking nice. hideous creature that looks like George Washington. But, like, I, I want the story that I fucked Barbara Bush. I mean, and I'm also going to get pictures. Well, and she'd be grateful for it. Yeah. She'd really put her all into it. Yeah. <laughs> she'd probably- she probably do anything you asked her to do. <laughs> <laughs> but when Palin becomes president, she's going to take this down. <laughs> so <I'm just> not... <laughs> I wish it was, if it was Palin versus Hillary, it would be the most massive landslide in the history of everything. Like, as soon as they both had the nomination, they should be like, it's over. Don't even bother. <laughs> just let one person vote. Pick one person in America and let them go vote. And they'll decide. It pick from a hat. <laughs> that would be terrifying. Yeah. Just one person from a hat. Can you imagine? Palin would love that. At least she'd have a shot. <laughs> it's a small shot. Yeah. So this guy, Alan West, is apparently a big, real big in the Republican yeah. circles. Yeah, doctor know. out of his fucking mind. I had no idea. I had no idea who he was. Like the guy, one of the guys on my team's over there talking to him, and they're they have these coins, like these, uh, like they give you in the service, you know, these special coins. They're talking about coins and all that. And I just thought it was just some dude. I look over, I'm like, come on, we got to go. He's like, this is Alan, Alan West. I'm like, oh, Batman, cool. Let's go. Come on. <laughs> 
And he was like, why'd you call him Batman? I'm like, Adam West. I mean, I could have thrown out Family Guy, but, you know, that's all I could think of at the moment. <laughs> well, I thought you said Black Man. Yeah, right. No, he is. I know. Oh, That's oh. why it's funny. <laughs> and he, uh, when we leave, he's like, he's going to run for president. And I was like, yeah, right. Like, we'll have a bu- – oh, no. Yeah, well, we totally do. That's what Walt asked me the other day. He's like, you think in my lifetime we'll have a white president? And I'm like, probably not. Because all he's ever known is Obama. <laughs> His first two are going to be a black guy and a white lady. It's totally different than the world we grew up in. Because <laughs> like, we had what? Reagan? Reagan, Reagan Bush, 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 Clinton, uh, Bush again. That's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. How the fuck did we go Bush, Clinton, Bush? <laughs> like, that's so well, different. that's the whole job of Democrats is to fix the fucking fuck up to the Republicans and then the Republicans get in and break it all again. Like the Republicans are somehow like, hey, claim to be the fucking fiscally responsible group. We're out of money. We got to get a Democrat in here. <laughs> it's really true, isn't it? Well, it's crazy. True in a sense. Where it all fell apart was fucking uh, Reagan. Because it was Carter's. Have you heard Carter's? They call it the Malay speech. Mm-mm. Look it up. It's a recent okay. loss. Basically, his whole speech is, hey, America, we got to fucking do our infrastructure. We got to watch out for the environment. It's what we need to he- do to have done. Yeah. And America went, they called him the lay speech, which he never says Yeah. Um, in the entire thing. Um, and uh, they uh, they were like, then Reagan came out and was like, no, you're perfect just the way you are. And that's how. He- like, in fact, we're so perfect that we're going to put lasers up in the stars and. Fuck Russia, air traffic controllers, quit if you want to. <laughs> Carter was badass. <laughs> and now he just builds houses. Yeah. He went they don't a, even um, want him there. He just wanders up in his bathrobe and a hammer. <laughs> Eating peanuts. <laughs> 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 There's some old white guy out the ghetto building houses with eating peanuts. Let's go help him. <laughs> do you do good think- at the shooting thing? Oh yeah, I did. I did all right. Um, the first year, I got wasted the night before, like laying on the benches in between rounds, throwing up through the slits in the bench, and they would shake me. I get a boop, 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 <laughs> I did really good. The next year, I got wasted there, and we just like ah, bah, 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 and did okay. This year, I didn't drink till it was over, and I did pretty shitty. <laughs> so, <laughs> I think I need a certain amount of alcohol in my system. Team that won at the okay, it's a competition. And if you win, you get, like, a jacket and some shit. You know, but it's the, the prestige of winning. So the guy that we know pretty well, my brother and I and father know pretty well, um, his team won this year. Mm-hmm. And it was awesome that he won. Well, then, when they announce it, they're like, you won. And they go up, and they're like, hey, you have a new guy on your team. Can you have him come up? And you see the guy kind of kick the ground a little bit. And he's like, yeah. This motherfucker's an Olympic caliber shooter. Going to be in the Olympics next time that he flew down from St. Paul, Minnesota to shoot in this tournament. Like, what a dickhead. (laughs) But what's funny is whenever they called him out for it, he called out everybody else that had college shooters and stuff on their team. He ratted publicly in front of everyone. So, can't trust this guy anymore. <laughs> He's the kind of guy that gets pulled over speeding. He's like, listen, I know people that sell weed. It's like, it's just a speeding ticket. <laughs> I could not believe he rolled over so quickly. So quick. Like, if it was Goodfellas, it would have been over with right then. My like, whole family just shot in the... <laughs> Could not believe how quickly he flipped on everybody. Like instantaneously flipped on it, and still took his trophy. He was just like, <laughs> just took it. So good for him. You got to own it, I guess. When uh, when I was a kid, do you remember? Uh... Yeah. So me and him, we were born on the same day. We were like. Good buddy. Like, the reason my, well, re, my teeth are chipped a lot more, but the first time was trying to do the, the you know, from Rad, the backflip in Rad. Fuck yeah, I know Trying that. to do that off of this house that was getting built. Landed on my back, and handlebars hit my teeth. Um, by that time, uh, my like, I had nails in my back and shit, and I went home, and Mom's like, so what? We got to go to Teal's play. 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, we've been to the fucking med stop enough. You're going to be fine. Like, she busts out the encyclopedia to see how long it takes tetanus to set in. <laughs> 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 anyway, uh, uh, me and Z, it's like right after we learned curse words, it's probably, I think, second grade. We're, for a while, what we were doing is like riding our bicycles around screaming them. Like, that was cool. Uh, just riding our bicycles and screaming curse words. Anyway, these people moved in across the street from me, and, and uh, they got new cement put in. And so, of course, we went over and wrote curse words in the, in the wet cement. <laughs> so later on that day, the 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 lady from that I'm playing out in the front yard. The lady from the that house comes over and is like, "Do you know who uh, wrote bad words in the cement?" No hesitation whatsoever. And down the street, he lives <laughs> down two blocks, and he's right over there. Uh, and of course, he ratted me out also. Um, but I mean, there was no fucking hesitation. Just immediately, yeah, yeah, yeah. That guy down the street. So if you're driving your bike around yelling cuss words, you were just training yourself for driving. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Oh, just yelling. It's so funny. <laughs> fucking curse words. And are the kids in the room? Yeah, come here, say hi. Hey, Spence. Hey, which one's? Ah, I knew it was Luke. Okay. How Smart you doing, boy. dude? Good, how are you? I'm good. What do you like to do? At, what class do you like in school? Mainly just the one. Mainly just some music. Music? Cool. He's going to be in a play on the 28th. Oh, yeah? Yeah, play awesome. the play. Uh, awesome. What play? Yellow Jacket. Um, it's Bugs. It's about Bugs? I think it's Bugs, the show Bugs. No. It's Is it not? Not the show. Well, I'm not that into Yeah, I don't really know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's about bugs. All right, say bye. What do you need? you need something? Um, my fortress is going down. Why? Um, first we were in it. The wall is going down. Y'all broke it? What? Y'all took it down? No. Nope. I didn't fix it. It was going down. <laughs> Shut the door. <laughs> Shut the door. Okay, so they're fortress. Like, my living room looks like a squatter's village right now. I've got sheets up on the walls. Pivot. Like, the couch is so fucked up and old. It's only a year old, and everybody's been jumping on it and shit. So I'm just, like, screw-gutting fucking blankets into the back and stuff. But it looks awesome. It's like a tent city. That's what it looks like. So, but the problem is, all the air vents are up top, and the fans, so once you get in, it's like a sweat hole in there. <laughs> <laughs> he was so sweaty just from being in there. But, uh... <laughs> so I realized every time we upload one of these on the iTunes, I knew it got checked. Mm -hmm. um, but I thought it like ran through a program um, that would like check for music that someone sure. else wrote. It's not. There's a group of people, their job is to listen to every podcast that goes through and fucking approve it or not. That so makes me want to do like a five hour long one just going Twelve hours of that. Uh or <laughs> maybe maybe it's something looking for specific words like ISIS or whatever. Uh, let's give some terrorist advice. My first idea. Fucking knitting needles in the airplane. They totally let you bring knitting needles in, and that's a better weapon than a fucking little uh, knife, whatever. That oh, is. for sure. Box cutter sure. and shit. A needle, uh, that. How it's else just do you a cause harpoon. One? What are some other ways to cause chaos? I know they'll probably start making like ice swords or something. <sighs> ice swords. Here's They're how you cause some chaos, chaos with like. Five fucking people. This is another make America implode thing. You get, you know, like five people different around the country, a cop car looking cop car, you know, with rollers and shit, mm -hmm. fucking uniform. And out in the middle of nowhere, random times in like a week, totally different places. You pull someone over, fucking shoot them. Now, in one of these, someone needs to survive so they can say a cop walked up. And just shot us for no fucking reason. People won't stop for cops anymore. Uh, like, it it will 
fucked shit up, you know you'll get some copycats going on in it, and it'll mm-hmm. it'll blow the fuck up. That's good. Yeah. That's that's good. That, yeah, that's my uh, that's my bring the fuck is just crash a country. Like, that's good. Yeah, I yeah. like that. Yeah, I mean I don't like that, but that's a good idea. Like, yeah, that's good. Oh man, that's good. I know. This is what I would do to make America implode. Like every mix master in every city, every morning. I would take a car and fucking blow it up on the mix master so that people had to sit in traffic for fucking four hours every morning and we would all kill each other. <laughs> it would be up for it. If you could stop down every highway in every major city every morning, that would be the end of America <laughs> because we cannot handle traffic like that. Uh, if I was doing it, I'd probably get a group of guys to fly some planes into some buildings and then like drag America into like an extended war so their economy falls apart. We would never Uh-oh. do that. <laughs> yeah, like I totally, I'd do something like that. I, I and, and I'd even say that's why it is. I'd go, this is why I'm doing it. And, and y'all would be like, but you hate our freedom. And I'd say, yeah, that's what I, I hate your freedom. Come on. Right, cool. <laughs> We're buried in the sand and don't give a fuck. Spend you know your I mean? money. Uh, that's how I'd do it. If you live in a cave and you have a rocket launcher, is there any more freedom than that in the entire world? Like <laughs> you don't have rent, you don't have to worry about shit. And if you have something, you can go get it. Like that's freedom. Like I have a mortgage, a car payment, insurance, phone bill. I'm tied down to everything. If I lived in a cave with a satellite phone that was prepaid and I had a rocket launcher in AK forty seven, I would be the freest person in America. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> I don't get it. They have so much more freedom. And if they want girls, they just go take them all out of the village. <laughs> I wonder what they're looking for on the iTunes thing. Like, I, I got I really want to know. I bet it's the people in the factory that have to listen to it, though. The factory people? <laughs> they're making the iPads and all that. They're just, they're just constantly listening to podcasts. <laughs> what I end up- People of China, children, band together. <laughs> I mean, really, I hope they don't. Because if they if they do, I hope they go east, just like ants, and just take over Russia and everything like that. <laughs> they can have it. That's fine. Like, can you imagine, like, the Sistine Chapel with, like, digital lights and shit everywhere? Like, it would be amazing. <laughs> like... <laughs> Like one of those floors that lights up over the tile, like it would be perfect. <laughs> Think about it. If China takes over all of Europe and Africa and they kill everybody, it's just Chinese over there, then America would be the land of giants. <laughs> <laughs> it would totally go old school. Everybody in Europe would be small and everybody over here would be huge. It would be perfect. <laughs> Who was the fucking guy you sent a picture of from um, the... Oh, that was uh, Guy Metzger. He's a... Uh, like, we have UFC over here, which is like boxing now, where they do like one or two fights a year, right? Well, he did all the Japanese shit back in the day where it was like, you can hit him in the nuts, fucking claw shit out, like real fucking true combat fighting. And he won everything, right? So I'm there and I see him. I'm like, I think that's who it is. So, you know, my sister got hurt and she goes to that brain trauma center. Well, he goes to the same place because he has a brain tumor that's like moving. All right. So yeah, that's not a tumor. That's like a tick. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, he, he, I think he's probably got like brain Lyme disease. Right. He tells me that she's been telling me this guy's been working with her, working with this guy, guy, guy. Well, I thought she was like, dude. Well, I woke up, I'm like, hey, my sister goes to the same place. And he's like, what's your name? I'm like, Katie. He's like, I work with her all the time. We have the same doctor. And I'm like, shut the fuck up. Like, she's been trying to tell me. But you know, we talked for a while, and, you know, I was like, I'm not trying to be a tourist, but I want to get a picture with you. Like, you know, you kind of, as far as all that stuff goes, like, you're the baddest man. You know, you're bad. And he's like, you know, thank you. And we, we talk, and he's totally cool. And you can be cool when you're like that, though. Like, if everybody there went crazy, he'd be the last guy standing up. You know what I mean? Like, it's that bad. 
But a uh, totally cool guy, and he actually invited me over on Saturday, but I totally didn't make it. And so now I'm worried whenever I see him. But uh, he, uh, um, he talks about all this stuff and about all the fighting and all that. And he was here in Dallas, right, at a diner. He goes to the same diner every Tuesday because his thumb was all jacked up. And he goes, yeah, I'm, I'm at the diner, and uh, I go there every Tuesday for an hour. And I have the same waitress. This black lady is my waitress. And a sweet lady and all that. He goes, well, I'm in there one day, and her boyfriend shows up. And she goes out to the parking lot to talk to him. He starts yelling at her and starts whooping her ass. He goes, so I go out there. Like, I can't imagine this guy coming at me mad. You know, <laughs> he, like, he goes out there to stop the fight. He said he puts his hand up, and the guy pulls out basically a machete and cuts his thumb off. Like, cuts it, like, not off, like, all the way down to here where she's hanging. Well, yeah. then he just destroys the guy, like, dismantles the guy out there. And he said, I, I just got in my car and drove to a sporting goods store so I could tape it up because my son had a soccer game. And I'm like, oh, my God. So he goes, I'm in there, and I can't, you know, I'm, I'm, my adrenaline's going. I can't really use my phone. So I give the, I have the checkout girl call my wife and tell her that I'm running late. He goes, so I'm sitting there, I've got my thumb, and it's, you know, the, the pain hadn't even set in yet, you know. And uh, he'd already dealt with the cops and all that. Like, there was a big write-up in the paper about it. But so he, uh, she calls, and she goes, uh, Ms. Mesger? And she's like, yeah. And she goes, I think I've got your husband here. He's going to be late for the soccer game. He's uh, been attacked and cut. And she's like, nobody would attack my husband. Like, no way. She goes, what does he look like? And she goes, I don't know. He's an older gray-haired guy. And that's what pissed him off. He was like, what the fuck? I'm not older gray-haired. Not that his thumb was cut off. <laughs> so he's like asking me, like, do I look older? Do I have gray hair? <laughs> I'm like, no, you look great. But uh, what was cool, though, he said, bring the kids down here and I'll roll with you. And you can beat me. And they, you can, they can say that their dad beat Guy Mesker. And I'm like, that's cool. You're like, what a cool thing to do. You know? Hell yeah. So he was cool. And then uh, I mean, hold on real quick. Guy Metzger, um, I'm going to leave this in. So if you're upset about anything Craig just said, it was all Craig. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Craig Watson. Um, he yeah. has two little kids, but they'll be easy for you to get rid of. They'll probably be on your side. But it was all Craig, Mr. Metzger. Hey, Mr. Mesger, if you want to get back at me, just take it out on my sister. <laughs> <laughs> I like that she's in, that you didn't know she was talking about something, which made her look like her brain was fucked up. So you're like, yeah, she keeps talking about some guy, but she doesn't say anything. <laughs> we definitely got to keep her coming to this brain place. <laughs> <laughs>
It wouldn't even matter if you looked like the bad guy because you would just fix it. Like, we didn't go over there and kill everybody. We've always been here. Nobody's like, oh, you've always been here? And you're like, yeah, no, okay. <laughs> all you got to do is go by everything with magnets. Go by all the servers with magnets. Nobody even owns books, like encyclopedias and all that shit. Do you remember encyclopedias? Mm-hmm. Like, I loved our encyclopedias. Like, all my book reports, everything. Oh, like, yeah. Shit's over with. Nice. My kids are like, why do they have all those books up there with letters? And I'm like, those are encyclopedias. And I'm like, <laughs> That was I fun, looking up the Blackfoot cool. Indians. What's uh, that? Looking up the Blackfeet Indians or Blackfoot. I can't remember. Uh, yeah, it's African American foot, but yes, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> um, yeah, those, those, the, you know, tar babies. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> Wow. No one should be more pissed than American Indians. And they just played it cool, kept quiet, did their thing, opened up casinos, and they're just fucking everybody clean now. Like over here, like the the Choctaw and Windstar and all that, I mean, they are literally just funneling money out of the same people that would have been in the cavalry that were running them down. Like, it's so wild to watch. Like, all the ancestors of the settlers that didn't give a shit about Indians now are going broke, making the Indians the most powerful group over here. There will be a point in time where it's going to be fucking India part two. All of our doctors are going to be India Indians, and all of our rich people are going to be feather Indians. Totally going to happen. Yeah, it's not going to happen. It's totally going to happen. And and the regular, the, the India Indians... All they have to do is p- quit prescribing insulin, and half of us are going to fucking die anyway. In fact, I think they're working together because of the casinos here. All they give away is free Cokes. So you go in there for eight hours. You pound 25 Cokes. You end up with type 2 diabetes. Then you go see your Indian doctor. He doesn't prescribe. He doesn't fix your diabetes. He tells you you don't have it. And then you go into whatever shock, and you die, and they win. <laughs> they break you, and then they kill you with sugar. <laughs> 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 fucking snark trying to pull the video camera down yeah she doesn't like me huh doesn't like me it's snark a doesn't like me. She's got a dick oh my God. little tiny dick well see I, ne- I didn't know because I never get close enough to him the whole time yeah exactly dead. you were trying to see it's dick dude <laughs> it looks like when he got neutered or whatever it looked like they stuck his balls in a deep fryer <laughs> it looks so awful. <laughs> Isn't that right, you little ball is weirdo? So when I was working on the cattle ranch, we used to have to nut the the bulls to make them steers, right? Yeah. And you get this thing, it's a gun with the rubber band on it, and you grab their nuts, and you put this on there, and you pull it, and it stitches it up really tight, Okay. Well, then you can either leave it and they'll just fall off, which is horrible, I bet, for them to feel. And well, you know what I mean? Just, hey, your balls are falling off. They're like, I know. Can you get this band off my balls? <laughs> like, and they just can't do it. But the vet tech would cut him, put his hand in there, and pull, and he would actually hear a snap. And then he would just have balls in his hands. Okay. So I'm watching this, and I'm just fucking almost like passing out. Like, I'm queasy. I can't deal with it. He gets a campfire going and puts an iron skillet that he had in his truck on top of it and starts throwing the balls in it. Huh. And he's cooking them to eat them right there. And I'm like, these haven't been cleaned. There's no question. They have to be filled with something, cum or something. There has to be something in them. There's, there's a reason they're there. Like sausages. Just <laughs> fucking couldn't. Then he puts them on a bag. He's like, you want these? And I'm like, sure. I'm just, like, dumping them in the lake. You didn't eat a Rocky Mountain Oyster? (laughs) I have before, but at a restaurant where they've been processed, not, like, right out of their body. Oh, I would never order it. at uh, The only way I would do it if it was, like, that in that scenario right there. Oh, my God. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. Now, when we would do, uh, when we would get the the female cows to do hysterectomies, I would eat that stuff just raw. That's disgusting. I've seen city slickers. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh. <laughs> but it's great for your hair. 
<laughs> like all that stuff, if you put it in, it's like that. Remember that African pride we all used to use? That's yeah, it's just like that. I saw it the other day and I was like, I have bought literally gallons of that shit. I can't. <laughs> Dude, even uh, now, like, you know, I told you about Luke. I don't know if I talked about it on here, but he said a bad word at a birthday party. Uh, I don't know. Like, the worst word. Cunt? No, no, that's true. That's the worst word. <laughs> he, he definitely dropped a motherfucker. Like, get oh. your motherfucking ass away from me, kind of deal. <laughs> They're playing laser tag. Or, you know, he said, give me a motherfucking minute, is what he said. <laughs> so, they busted. He calls me first. Like, the guy, they had a game truck come. Have you ever heard of these? Like, a giant truck comes to the party and fits everybody out with laser tag shit, and they have all the video games in the truck, like a giant 18-wheeler thing, and the kids just play in the neighborhood laser tag. Dude, like it's, I just saw one of those driving down the street, and I was like, what the fuck is that? They're uh, awesome. Like, that's I so want funny. one keg party. Like, if we would have had that, like, in the house, it would have been fucking awesome. Oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> but, uh... But so he says that, and he gets the driver's phone. I'm like, what number are you calling me on? He's like, I picked up his cell phone and called you. I'm like, does he didn't know you have the phone? He's like, no. And I'm like, okay, well, give the guy his phone back, first of all. But uh, so he calls me and tells me. So they bust him. And they're like, where did you hear that word? Without missing a beat, he goes, halo. <laughs> so, and I said, why did you say that? He's like, dad, I wasn't going to tell on you. And I'm like, you're fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> So not only did he not get in trouble, he got treats for not being a rat. It was like, you popped a cherry. <laughs> but then I take him to see Home, right? The movie Home with uh, Rihanna and J-Lo and the dude from Big Bang Theory. Okay, we go see this kid movie, just me and him. And we go see it, and we come out, and there was an old lady that was walking through the parking lot. Well, it wasn't the best part of town, right? So I go, let's walk her to her car. Old woman, okay? Walk her over there, ride by us. I put Luke in the car, you know, lock the doors. I walk her over. She gets in her car and starts it. Well, she's talking to me, tell me thank you. Well, he gets out of the truck and runs over to me. And I'm like, okay. And I walk over and he goes, what was taking you so fu-? And I was like, what were you about to say? <laughs> he's about to say, what's taking you so fucking long? <laughs> <laughs> but that's exact. I can't get mad because it's exactly how I talk. Like, I just, you know. <laughs> So I told him, I was like, every time I cuss, I have to do 20 push-ups. Dude, day one, like 80 push-ups in. I'm like, all right, fuck this rule. I'll just give you a dollar. So now I just have a stack of ones. I look like I'm going to the strip clubs now. I've just got a stack of ones in my wallet so I can fucking peel them off. Whenever I, cuss. <laughs> I think the 20 push-ups might be good for you so you don't look like Zoidberg without his shirt on. Um, Dude, that's all, I've got the most. I just don't know what to do with the skin. I know. I Maybe figured, I should get that thing that they nut the cows with and just band it up right there and just let it die. Just let it die. That's the way it <laughs> like goes. It smells. I'm like, that's like four pounds of skin. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll call that guy to come over. He can cut it off and throw it in the skillet and we can be like Hannibal. <laughs> that. I like that. I would. Oh, def- oh if I have something uh, body Ooh. removed, I definitely want to be able to eat it. That would be so cool. Uh, what if you loved it? I got the taste, the, the hunger. That's it. Do you remember these books called uh, Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark? I remember things like that. Well, these ones, they were black and white, and the stories are dog shit. Now, like, I've gone back. I bought them for the kids. half price books. We don't have them. We don't have them. Got all these different half price books. Finally, the last one, I was like, I'm just going to go fucking look for them. And I find the first three original copies. I'm like, you motherfuckers. Like, I've been looking for these forever. But I didn't know the author. Uh-huh. Okay, so there's, like, scary stories. Like, and there's not, a, there's not a Google or anything. Yeah, right. Well, they were looking them up in an encyclopedia. Uh-huh. So, we, <laughs> so I, uh, I go and uh, I get them. And this, the drawings are so fucking scary. Like, that's what I remember about them. I, I'm going to send you some of these. I think I, I think I remember the covers like white with black drawings. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, they are the drawings. The, the artist was Stephen Gamel. Mm. And, dude, I don't know if he ever did anything else. I need to look him up. But the shit he did in there is like, I might get a fucking tattoo piece. You don't know what <laughs> Stephen Gamel did? Do you, know, do you know who he is? Dude, he's that guy who kidnapped all those children 
and Shut then, up. And then remove their faces and swap faces with all of them and then return them to the fa different families and stuff to see what would You're happen. crazy. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> After looking at his shit, it wouldn't surprise me. Oh, did you see that they're going to do head transplants now? No, but were you listening to the Ricky Gervais show and heard Carl Pilkington say that? No. Uh -uh. They're not doing head transplants. Yeah, they are. We can't even talk about it because it's all been said on the Ricky Gervais show. I can't even explain to you that it would be a body transplant, not a fucking head. That makes sense. <laughs> that, yeah, that makes way more sense. Yeah, okay, Stephen Gamow, I've got him right here. Yeah, you're totally right, cutting off faces. <laughs> <laughs> I think in hey, the, Amber. Hello. Hello. She would say hi, but she's completely naked right now. Totally, totally. <laughs> and I broke. Covered in milk? No, no, it's mud. Oh. We're doing a mud thing. She's getting ready for a mud run, and I don't want to buy her new clothes for it. I'm like, just cover up with mud and see how long it stays on. Like, yeah. Can I, dude, in these fucking mud runs, like all these people, like, I want to do a mud run. They're fucking expensive. They're like, what is a off. mud run? Oh, my, they're everywhere down here. They get a field, and they flood it, so it's muddy, and people go do an obstacle course on it. Like, that's it. That's I like obstacle thing. courses. Yeah, I mean, I guess. I mean, do I do I want to pay to do one, though? Well, I know. Like, that's where I was about to get to. How much is it? 90 bucks. 90 bucks to do a goddamn yeah. obstacle course? 90 bucks. Like, to me, like, I would rather be in a, like, if I was kidnapped and drugged and woke up and think, like, saw or cube i would take saw or cube over an obstacle course so if you have to cut your eye out to get the key and then you're free no problem you have to do an obstacle course i'm just gonna sit here and die of starvation <laughs> 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 i'm gonna eat all these other people here first and then when that runs out i'll maybe do it <laughs> like a haunted house i always worry i'm going through and the guy in front of me just turns around like stabs me in the stomach and i'm like holy shit i knew this was gonna happen <laughs> That's a, I'm not scared of the people jumping out. I'm scared of the people in front of me and behind me. Like, that's what I'm scared of. Right? Because you just throw a piano cord over somebody and they're like, oh, look, that guy's getting choked to death. That's so scary. And you're like, yeah, I'm choking him to death. <laughs> like American Psycho, zoo scene, like that's what I think about every time. I feel like I can negotiate with a spider, but I can't with a roach. Well, actually, I'm not, as, I'm not afraid of spiders anymore. And the reason why is now I... Or, I kill him with my hand. I started doing that, you know, like 20 years ago or whatever. I was like, this is a stupid fear. Kill it with your bare hand. And just, that's what I do now. It's just gross with tarantulas. Oh my God. I can't even imagine. Uh, it's like fucking a hermit crab. Yeah. Uh, hermit crab. Dude, I've got a horrible hermit crab story. Oh my God. Do, is there any hermit crab story that doesn't end in tragedy? <laughs> no, no, nobody has a hermit crab story that's like and then he went off and was free to live the hermit crab life with his lover i guess the, the girl is the hermit crab the other one's the hemic crab <laughs> if you any pet that you buy for a child you're like, see how long it's going to take you to kill this animal. <laughs> That's all you're doing. Like, not a dog or a cat, necessarily. Like, if the cats and dogs are dying, you need to get the kid, kid checked out. But any fish, anything that's small enough to hold in a hand is yeah. not going to... Gerbils, fucking hamsters, all that shit. You're going to kill all of them. <laughs> anything that can be killed by being stepped on is a goner. <laughs> or, or, or not being fed for... Or overfed. Like... Okay, we had uh, African cichlids, right? Um, mean ass. Wait, wait, fish. what did you have? African cichlids with the fish. The fish. They look like uh, they look like saltwater fish, but they're freshwater. They're from two different lakes in Africa. Okay. Okay, and they're they're beautiful. They really are. They're beautiful fish. Some of them are ultra aggressive. Like if you get one from one of the other lakes and put it in there, if it's a badass, it'll kill all the ones from the other lake. They can't be from different lakes, and there's only two lakes. How do they know what lake they're from? I got that. I can find out right now. Um, but they, uh, we we had them, and 
we went out of town, and Luke was, I don't know, five years old. Uh, Malawi and Victorian are the lakes. So these are uh, like the Bloods and Crips of the fish community? That's a perfect, that is fucking perfect. Yeah, that's exactly what they are. <laughs> exactly what they are. But they, uh, let's see, okay, found in Tanganyaka and Malawi. Okay, the Tanganyaka and Malawi lakes of Central Africa. So, but they're cool fish, and they're not crazy expensive. They're like 8 to $50 a piece, but they're beautiful, right? So, first day, he feeds them all the food. Fish just sink to the bottom. They eat until they sink and can't swim. That's a horrible way to die. They <laughs> sat down there and just died from being full. So, we come back, and the house smells like, like a whorehouse with dead hermit crabs in it, is what it smelled like, like that bad. And, uh... <laughs> He was upset about it, but we. Uh, what's funny is there was one fish still alive. <laughs> one, one had made it. So I get him out and I put him in a bowl by the sink. My cat, that that was Bokon, the cat Bokon, goes over and he's fucking with it, and I'm just watching him. Well, he gets it out, and I'm like, holy shit, he got it out. He gets it out and freaks out and throws it on the ground into the dog's mouth. And the dog takes it outside and eats it. So the kids are like, what the fuck just happened? And it was like the perfect like circle of life right there. Like it was perfect. <laughs> cat gets it. We take it out. Cat gets it. Dog eats it. Like, it was perfect right there. But what's funny is after that, the dog and the cat got along perfect. <laughs> I was like, thank you. And the cat's like, wasn't that cool? <laughs> I love that cat. That cat, that cat, I'd open a door and it would get up on top of the door and lay up there on balance on top, just to get away from the kids. It was the only place that the kids couldn't get to it. And they never looked up to see him there. So I was worried they're going to like slam the door and it's going to be like two broken legs, but they never did it. So very, very intelligent cat. But, uh, I was going to, I was going to teach him to use the toilet and shit, but every time I try, it would just ignore me and keep on typing. <laughs> but <laughs> really good cat uh all right man i gotta get off we got fucking a shit ton right on pal uh, um all right. and uh episode seven Woo! dare it with your friends watch extended videos on youtube <laughs> and you'll get to see kids, kids and stuff. Woo! Uh, all right. Uh, I'll talk to you in a bit, man. Peace. Bye, brother. <laughs> I delivered to a fucking guy. What he ordered was a pizza, some wings, and a side of Caesar salad dressing. Um, and we're all like, what the fuck is he going to do to that? So I'm going to ask him when we go there. <laughs> he's, uh, retarded and Asian and possibly high, which means he looked like he was dead. Um, <laughs> there was no way to get out of an answer out of this person. We were all depressed. We were like, what the fuck is he using it for? <laughs> so legit, legitimate mongoloid. <laughs> yeah. And like the straight up, the mongoloid of the, yeah. It was uh, a sad, sad day. Some names, dates, and locations have been changed to protect the guilty. Only Craig and Spence should be judged by the content. Yeah, and, and find us on, we're on Facebook, Twitter, Vine, what else? Instagram, all of it. I don't know, you're in charge of that shit.